Welcome everyone to a session on automata theory and computability. In today's session, we will discuss about ambiguity in the grammar. What makes the grammar ambiguous? See, sometimes a grammar may produce more than one parse tree for the same or all of the string it generates. Right? If that is the case, then the grammar is ambiguous. Okay? So we'll get a clear idea uh, once we take an example. So we have already designed some ambiguous grammar in our previous lecture videos. So let me uh, recall. So we have solved balanced parenthesis problem, right? And the solution what we have written with respect to context-free grammar is actually ambiguous. So this is the solution. S queues, open bracket, yes, closing bracket, S queues, SS, and S queues, epsilon, right? Now, with the with some example, I will explain that this particular grammar is ambiguous. Okay, so I want to generate string. Okay, so this is the string what I want to generate, and using either leftmost derivation or rightmost derivation, if I am able to generate more than one parse tree then the grammar can be proved to be ambiguous. Okay? So let me uh, write one pass tree now. So this can be generated by using these rules, SQs, SS, and, okay, so if I am following left to most derivation, then I have to expand the left to non-terminal first, right? Okay. So this S can again be further evaluated to or expanded to open bracket okay so this is again so will be expanded as s yes. and finally this s will be evaluated to epsilon and so I was able to generate up to here, right? And uh, the only left non-terminal, this S will be expanded as open bracket, close bracket, right? This S can be evaluated to epsilon. So I was able to generate this particular string using leftmost derivation, right? Okay. Now. If I take the same string, I can generate. I can generate this by using uh, another pass tree. Okay, so here I will write it as S Q S S, S. and what I will do is now I will expand this S again as S S. Okay. So what I'm doing is again following leftmost derivation. So here the leftmost non-terminal S will be replaced with the uh, epsilon. And coming to the leftmost, now the remaining pending uh, leftmost uh, non-terminal is this, right? So this is the this is the one which I want to expand. So I'll write this as opening bracket, yes, closing bracket. Again, I'll replace this with opening bracket, yes, closing bracket. I'll expand this, or substitute this with epsilon. So I was able to generate up to this point now. Now, uh, with the remaining yes, what I will do, uh, or with the only left out yes, I'll substitute it as open bracket, yes, closing bracket then yes is substituted to epsilon. Now if you, if you observe, um, using the leftmost derivation itself, I was able to generate these two strings, but in two different ways, right? So this is the first way, 
which is which is actually correct and this is also correct isn't it this is not wrong so this is in the, for this particular derivation i have more than one partial so if this is the case then my grammar is ambiguous right and it doesn't matter whether i have two or three so if i have more than one partial for the same derived string then my grammar is ambiguous in fact uh, this particular uh, string can be uh, can be derived or i can have infinite number of parsi for this particular string for this particular derivation right what i can do is i can i can have n number of uh, s and i can substitute these s as epsilon like what i did here right so this makes our grammar ambiguous okay now why ambiguity is a problem the amb ambiguity is actually a problem when it comes to evaluating the uh, parsi right when I, when it comes to evaluation it is a uh, it produces different results uh, to get a clear idea we will take one more example to get a clear idea let's take this particular example this is a grammar for simple arithmetic expression and only for the sake of understanding of ambiguity uh, we have written this grammar this is not a complete solution for evaluation of arithmetic or uh, generation of arithmetic expression because um, many arithmetic operators are missing here right i don't have minus or uh, division or modulus operation so only for the sake of understanding we have this small simple arithmetic expression which does addition and multiplication okay so this grammar is actually ambiguous so how it is ambiguous uh, we will take some example now id is nothing but the uh, digit uh, it is instead of writing the numbers i have replaced it with id identifiers so if i take example something like this 1 plus 2 plus 3 so this can be written as or this can be viewed as id plus id plus id okay so this for this particular string id plus id plus id or um, for 1 plus 2 plus 3 i'll be able to generate more than one pass through right and let us see how this can be generated e obviously i have to make use of plus only here so e gives e plus c right okay and uh, if i follow left to most derivation then i obviously i have to substitute this e so this can be written as again e plus e and this e will be evaluated to id this will be id again and this the only left out uh, non terminal e will be evaluated to id so that's nothing but 1 2 2 and 3 okay okay and the other pass through what i can design is e plus e and this c what i will do is i will evaluate it to id and the non terminal e here i will expand it as e plus e and this will be evaluated to id okay and this e again i will evaluate it to id so what do i have i have 1 2 and 3 so these uh, two parses will be able to generate 1 plus 2 plus 3 or id plus id plus id right so in this in, in terms of generation um, both the parses are correct right but when it comes to evaluating this expression then one is wrong right see normally how do we evaluate any arithmetic expression so when i have same arithmetic operator with the equal preced precedence here in k in, it is plus right so i have i have to always follow the associativity right and we evaluate by using left associativity right so this should have been evaluated first right or uh, let me 1 plus 2 should be done first then the result of which should be added to 3 that is how we follow in performing addition right but this which is um, true in this case right id plus id 
which is evaluated to this C, the result what I get here, and this result basically which is uh, 3 will be added to this 3 and the final answer will be returned to this non-terminal, sorting non-terminal which is uh, 6, right, okay. So, this is true. But uh, when, you, when it comes to the other pass tree, if you observe, the evaluation is done first for 2 and 3. So, 2 and 3 is first eva evaluated first. So, the result, I will get 5 here, which is added to this ID 1 and this is the solution what I get, 6. The final answer uh, returned is 6. Of course, the final result is same, but the way of evaluating this particular arithmetical expression is uh, wrong in this case, right? So, this is, uh, this is why ambiguity is a problem and we have to avoid ambiguity. And let us take uh, uh, one more example on the same arithmetical expression problem such that we, uh, even the results obtained will be different, okay? So, now you may question that uh, it does not matter, we got the same result, right, 6 and 6. So, let us take one more example to get a clear idea, okay? So, this again, this is evaluated as 1 plus 2, result is added to 3, which is 6. And here, it is evaluated as 1, 2 plus 3, result is 6. The way of evaluation is wrong. So, uh, this uh, this is a uh, this is an ambiguous grammar, and I should have had only this, right? I should be able to generate only leftmost, uh, or I should incorporate left associativity. Okay. Now we'll take one more example. Now let's consider another example. So I'll take the string as two plus three star five which can be written as id plus id star id, okay, yeah, so this id basically represents 2, this is 3, this is 5, okay, now let me write a parse for this, so this can be, this can be generated as e gives, so I can apply any one of the rule, E gives E plus C. Okay, and this key will be evaluated to ID, which is 2 here. Okay, and this E, what I will do? I will expand it to E star E. Further, this will be evaluated to ID. So I am uh, representing 3 here. And this again will be evaluated to id where I get 5, okay. So, this is one partial what I obtained. So, I was able to generate this. So, let me write another partial e gives e star e. And this C will be expanded as E plus C. This will uh, be evaluated to ID, writing 2. This will be evaluated to ID again, they represent 3. And finally, this E will be evaluated to ID, I am representing it as. Okay, here also I am able to generate more than one parsi, right? So I, I was able to generate this parsi. But uh, when it, if I, if I have to evaluate this expression, then I will get a different result. So this is, see if you observe this, here it is 3 into 5 will be evaluated first. So what do I get? I get 15, okay. So it will return a value 15 here and 2 will be returned to this C. And finally, then what I perform? I perform addition. So 2 plus 15, so I will get the answer as 72. Right. So, this is the return value, uh, the value returned by this particular parse tree, right. And when it comes to the other one, what I will get? So, here I am performing addition first, right. So, 2 plus 3, 2 plus 3, 
you give me the answer as 5 and 5 into 5 so I'll get the result as 25 now which is the right answer when it comes to evaluating whether it is 17 or 25 right so this is we have we obtained two different results because of the ambiguity in present in my grammar right and obviously um, the answer should be 17 right I should perform multiplication first then I have to then I have to add the result of multiplication such that I'll get the uh, final answer as 17 that is because we have we, we we have learned that we have to follow the precedence in uh, performing arithmetical operations right multiplication is having higher precedence over addition so this is 17 is the right answer but this uh, particular grammar may generate uh, not may it will generate more than one uh, parsi with the different result right so this makes the grammar ambiguous and so this is why we have to remove the ambiguity from the grammar so just an example and this can this uh, scenario can be applicable for other grammars also right okay so here with this particular problem we have two two issues one is it doesn't address associativity that is uh, evaluating uh, using left associativity that is one problem the other one is it does not incorporate precedence right so we have to solve these two issues by uh, converting this into an unambiguous grammar okay? which we will be looking in the next video so i'll see you in the next one thank you